anyway uh, okay so what is your doubt so uh, could you explain this step once again how to do this see, tree by tree calculation see it, it, so uh, this is what we had done in our undergraduate course isn't it we started from x d y d then we went to up to the equilibrium line then we went to the operating line then we went to the equilibrium line then we went to the operating line and so on this is how you did in your third year yes sir right so what are we doing if you think in terms of the distillation column this is your xd yd whatever is going to the reboil whatever is going to the condenser and coming back as a reflux from the condenser that is this point now we have our first tray topmost tray or topmost i should not say tray because it might be a packed packed column what we what i want to say is is we have the topmost theoretical plate now if you write all the liquids going down from the tray let's call this as x1 let's call this as x2 going down from tray 2 let's call this as y3 y2 and y going up from the first tray y1 which is nothing but yd now when we do equilibrium calculation we are going from here to here what are we doing we are finding what is the value of x in equilibrium with this y going down from the tray from the theoretical plate from the first theoretical plate and then when we come to the operating line what are we doing by material balance across this first theoretical plate we are finding what is the y2 in equilibrium with x uh, sorry what is the y2 which is coming from material balance corresponding to x1 so this point is our x1 yd this point is our x1 y2 are you clear with this so this is our one theoretical plate yes is that sir okay yes sir this is what you've done in your undergraduate course isn't it yes sir now to do this you have to find x in equilibrium with yd this is a dew point calculation finding out x in equilibrium with a given value of y and a given pressure you remember from your thermo lectures yes sir it is a dew point temperature calculation given p and y you are calculating t and x to get to the t you will have to use the antoine equation to get to that temperature because temperature is unknown you will have to solve for temperature because a itself is going to depend on temperature is this okay yes sir okay now dew point calculation you people only told me that dew point calculation is difficult correct or wrong who was telling the dew point calculation difficult last time as compared to bubble point isn't it yes sir so if you think about it now doing calculation from bottom of the column to top of the column if we think about doing that now imagine that now imagine that now imagine that we have this this is our xf maybe somewhere here is our xf xf we have x d y d here and this is our operating line isn't it they are intersecting somewhere here but let's not worry about where they are intersecting this is your rectification operating line 
and this is your stripping section operating line do you agree with that yes sir now we are starting from bottom of the column which means we are starting from xw and yw so yw is vapor coming from the reboiler xw is the liquid going to the reboiler there is a reboiler somewhere here we are not showing that that's not important now our first tray or first theoretical plate is here this is our first theoretical plate so we will call this as y1 we will call this as x2 our third tray theoretical plate is here we will call this as y2 we will call this as x3 is that okay now we know yw and we know xw we are assuming it's a total reboiler or even if i don't assume it's a total reboiler i know what is the value of yw because reboiler behaves as one theoretical stage corresponding to xw yes no yes sir now what are we doing we are coming down like this starting from here we have started here and we have been coming down operating line equal uh, equilibrium operating line 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 this is how we have been doing in our undergraduate course isn't it because we had to we, we drew things graphically so there was no problem we had no concept that it was a dew point it was a bubble point and so on now if i have to go the other direction if i have to go in this direction what we will have to do we will have to go from xw yw to the equilibrium line means what we will have to find the y1 which is in equilibrium with xw isn't it so this point would be xw comma y1 now we will go from y1 to x2 which is a material balance material balance across this bottom what bottom envelope whatever way you mugged up we will go to the operating line in the stripping section so this this point would be x2 and y1 now we will go to the equilibrium line means what we are finding what is the y2 in equilibrium with x2 so this point would be x2 comma y2 then we come to the operating line this point would be now going from y2 to x3 this point would be x3 comma y2 do you agree with that yes sir so in going from xw yw to xw y1 we are going from here we are going from here to here how are we going we are going to do an equilibrium calculation finding y in equilibrium with x oops finding y in equilibrium with x which is a bubble point it's a bubble point a bubble point temperature calculation knowing pressure one atmosphere and the value of x in this particular case xw we are finding what is the temperature and y1 which is in equilibrium with this xw is that okay 
Uh, yes, sir. So, so from X W to uh, X W Y W to X D Y D, we we'll use the stripping section, stripping operating line only, or after X Y X F will change too. Are the concept remains the same that after this point, after this point where they intersect each other, then we go to the rectification section, then we go to rectification operating line. We are going above the feed line, no? We will calculate all the way up to feed, then. The stripping section is over. Then the rectification section starts. So, which operating line will we take in the rectification section? Hello. Yes, sir. R y is equal to R minimum upon. Correct. In in the rectification section, we will take the rectification operating line. In the stripping section. we will take the stripping section operating line so depending on which section we are in we will take the corresponding operating line even undergraduate course you went you did you drew triangles here triangle here triangle here triangle here triangle but then you, you did you not change to stripping section operating line yes or no Yes, sir. This is still the concept. In undergraduate course, why did we draw graph, and why did we draw triangle? We were learning the concept. Why did we take alpha equal to two in the undergraduate course? Why did we take x d equal to point nine five in the undergraduate course? Because we wanted to draw graph to understand the concept of equilibrium, concept of operating line, concept of going from one theoretical stage to another theoretical stage that is the concept we learned and therefore we did it graphically and therefore we did with alpha equal to 2 and xd equal to 0.95 so that we could draw with a pencil do you agree with that yes sir now it is your job Where did we start with? Now alpha is no longer constant. Alpha is not a constant number. It can be highly non-ideal, and we need purity is like. x d equal to 0.999 therefore it is not possible to draw a graph therefore we are doing plate by plate calculations using thermodynamics do you agree yes sir is your doubt resolved or not resolved So I'm little bit facing a problem to how to apply it into Excel. So I'll try it because I understood what we have to do, but it's very difficult how I'll apply it on Excel and how I'll solve it. Try it now. Yes, sir. Let's do it together. Do you have vapor pressure equations for aniline and cyclohexylamine? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, you have. So okay. So so tell me. Wait a second. all right let's do it together so this is our xw right what did we want xw to be 0. Point, what was the value that we wanted so 0.999 no, 0.001 no more volatile yes sir yes sir more volatile. so let's say x1 this is our bottom most tray x1 so x2 would be 1 minus this temperature is to be calculated but temperature will be very close to uh, what what will be the temperature it will be close to aniline boiling point right bottom is almost pure aniline 
Hello. Oh uh, yes, it would be four fifty seven. Right. So four fifty seven Kelvin. Almost. It is anyway guess value. Yes, sir. Now corresponding to this temperature, can we calculate P one sat? Can we calculate P two sat by Antoine equation? Yes, sir. Right. So I'm saying, I'm just saying dash 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 dash. But we can calculate. Can we calculate the A value, the Margulis constant at this particular temperature, for 57 Kelvin? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, can we calculate gamma one? Can we calculate gamma two? Because we know a, we know x two square, we know a, we know x one square. So gamma one and gamma two, can we not calculate? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have to find do the bubble point calculation, isn't it? Bubble point. So we have to say p one or x one. Multiplied by gamma one into p one sat plus x two into gamma two into p two sat. Do you agree with that? This yes, will sir. This is the double point pressure. Yes, sir. This we want it to be equal to seven sixty. We are doing one atmosphere. If your pressures are in mm hg, if this is in mm hg. And this also is in mm hg. This, this x1 gamma 1 p1 sat plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat. So this has to be equal to 760. Yes, sir. So all you do is you do data. You do where did that go? Uh, where did that go? Where did that goal seek go? So what if analysis? Yeah, what if analysis? Goal seek. So you say you say this cell equal to value seven sixty by varying this particular cell. Obviously, I won't get a solution now, but isn't it? Yes, sir. Let's put some number at four fifty seven. This may be seven sixty mmHg. This may be one thousand five hundred mmHg. This A would be let's say minus point one. Now gamma one e raised to a into x two square. I'm just putting some number. Huh? It, you you do actual calculation. Yes. Gamma two would be e raised to a into x one square. Okay. Now bubble point. Has come to. Oh, it has come to one four nine nine. Let's do this calculation. P is equal to gamma one. It's one. Into. Oh, I'm sorry. I sh it should be the other way around, isn't it? Even sat, this should be let's say one thousand five hundred, and P two sat should be aniline seven sixty. Isn't it? Do you agree? Yes, sir. It has come to seven sixty. Now only thing is this this temp these functions we have to put as a function of temperature. Now if you do goal seek, we want to set this cell to zero. By changing this particular cell, now it will not work because we have not put the vapor pressure as a function of temperature. But now we have got the bubble point, so now we can calculate y1 and we can calculate y2. So y1 would be x1 into p1 sat into gamma1 divided by total pressure, and y2 would be Two, two sat, M2 divided by total pressure. Do you agree with that? 
Yes, sir. So now, in terms of our, uh, let me copy this. Now, you want to go to the next value of x. So now you have to take this particular y1, this particular x1, and use the operating line and get the next tray. Do you agree with that? Hello. I'm just copying this. Let me copy it here. still seeing Excel, right? Right, are you able to see? This is what I have copied from Excel. Yes, sir. What did we do? This was our point zero one point zero one. This value. Now we have got this value. It is point zero zero one, and what is the value of y one? It is point zero zero one seven eight five. We have got this point. Now from here we have to go to operating line. What is our equation of operating line? Y is equal to m x plus c. Some value of m and some value of c. So from this particular value of y, we have to go to value of x. So in Excel, oops, sorry. So in Excel, from this particular value of y, from this particular value of y, now we have to go to the next value of x using the operating line. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. Now do the same thing again. Because it is Excel, you just have to copy and paste all these formulae. So, within this row, we are doing the equilibrium calculation. From here, we are doing the operating line calculation. And we have got the next value of X, which means we have got this value. You agree with that? Yes, sir. Now, will you be able to do? Yes, sir. Are a few people were stuck. Why did we not meet earlier? For we next time you get stuck when you want to discuss, just just send a message. We can arrange a half an hour meeting, one hour meeting, and everybody would be able to clarify their doubts rather than waiting for next Monday. Next Monday is too long too long a time because a new topic has to be done today. So do you people feel comfortable doing going from bottom to top now? Yes, sir. Oh, yucks. This homework. Will you be able to do? How many feel comfortable doing? We have to assume some value of reflux ratio that we have done already. I told you that last time. Only then we would get the operating lines, isn't it? So you have to assume a value of reflux ratio. Uh, sir? Yeah. So for assuming the reflux ratio, we, as you told us to generate the isobaric data. Correct. 
So yeah, but yeah. Okay. anyway, say anyway, it is only an assume, assumed value of R, right? We are not doing optimization yet. So you might as well use something like a Fenske equation and get a um, get a value of minimum theoretical stages, get a value of minimum reflux ratio from under root equation. You might even want to use just YD in equilibrium. You want, might even want to use, see here we had calculated alpha. Our alpha was ranging from 5, 6, 7, right? So you might as well take some average value of alpha, calculate this y, yf, and then get an r min from here. It's only an approximate value, but it will allow you to calculate operating lines and it will allow you to do these calculations. Once you do these calculations, then you can always do optimization. You can always change this assumed value of R and you can always find out how does this number of theoretical trays required change with R. This calculation is exact. Even if your R is approximate, it is okay. It is for that, I mean, there's nothing like approximate R. You are taking some value of R. You are doing calculations for R equal to, let's say, 5. You take any value, now. how does it matter? For R equal to 5, you will get number of theoretical stages. But because you have done calculations in Excel, then you can always change R. You can change R to 6, 7, 8, 4, 3. Isn't it? and you will find one particular value of R, you get a curve like this. So that is your R minimum. Do you agree? Yes, sir. And then you can find out the column diameter also from flooding. You will have to assume some kind of packing so then you can plot a graph of how r and column diameter look like how do you think it will look like reflux ratio and column diameter how do you think it will change Which one? Which one? So I think it will decrease. Which one? If reflux ratio increases, do you think column diameter will reduce or column diameter will increase? Anybody else around in the lecture? Diameter will sir, reduce. Column diameter will reduce if you increase the reflux ratio. Increase. Say that. Who is saying? Who is saying that? It will, it will increase, sir. Rahul, Session. Rahul, you are saying it will increase. Why is that? Sir, as a total reflux or a reflux ratio increases, then the uh, reboiler size, condenser size will become maximum and we can say that the uh, column diameter will also increase. Well, what has reboiler got to do with column size? No, sir. Uh, as a reflux uh, increases, all the parameter will increase. Reboiler size, reboiler duty, all uh, the condenser size also. Okay. What has reboiler size and reboiler duty got to do with column diameter? So I, I meant to say everything will increase. Uh, yeah, everything increase will increase means what? What will increase? But number of theoretical stages is going down, no? Yes, sir. Yes. Then how do you say? How do you make such generalized statements, Rahul? That everything will increase. Everything means what? Size of the Earth also will increase with reflux ratio. No, sir. Then the fluoride will increase, sir. Pardon? Say that again. Fluoride will increase. So that is the right. diameter of the increase. 
if i increase reflux ratio which flow rate is going to increase you are right but which flow rate tell me internal flow rate rectifying section internal okay so vapor flow so if i if you are talking about a column this is basic undergraduate stuff here if you are increasing your reflux means what are you doing this is your condenser you are increasing this reflux ratio your distillate is the same that is fixed right bottom product is the same because our feed flow rate is the same feed flow rate is the same feed composition is same d and xd are same b and xb are same now if i increase reflux ratio i am having more liquid going to the column correspondingly i have more vapor going to the column anybody agrees anybody disagrees or are we talking greek latin yes sir so yes sir liquid flow rate going down is going to go up vapor flow rate going to going up is going to go up to keep the same level of pressure drop in the column don't you think i will require more diameter we talked about pressure drop we talked about flooding last time if your flow rate vapor flow rate goes up to keep the same level of approach to flooding or to keep same level of pressure drop in the column don't you think we will require a more bigger diameter column nobody is saying anything which means nobody is attending we have 25 ghosts attending no 23 only out of this 25 two are me only one is me and one is my presentation hello do you people agree do you people disagree say something yes sir yes, i got it yes sir i agree ah. i agree sir okay so it will be something like this don't worry whether it is linear or non linear whether it is quadratic cubic let's not worry about it but reflux ratio goes up column diameter will go up so now you can do optimization capital cost of the column operating cost reboiler cost reboiler steam consumption all that and then you can optimize your value of reflux ratio whereas in undergraduate course who was telling me last time r optimum is equal to 1.5 times r minimum somebody was saying no who was saying siddhant you were saying who was saying i don't remember who is saying i was saying sir arshit ah okay so now do you agree arshit yes sir that by doing actual calculations you can do actual optimization based on costs cost of packing cost of column cost of exchanger reboiler cost of condenser these are all the fixed costs and operating cost is your steam consumption okay do you agree will you be able to do yes sir in excel and do these calculations for different values of r and actually get these kinds of behavior and you should also be able to do the dew point calculation you should also be able to start from here and then go down again it's an excel calculation do you agree yes no will you be able to do yes sir shall we go to the yes. next part does anybody have any doubts shall we go to next part 
Let's do a simple multi-component calculation. To make your life simple, we are going to assume that we have benzene, toluene and xylene. Let's say mole fractions. Say 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0.4. We get a distillate. We get a bottom residue. W or B, whatever. What did we call last time? We calculated B or we calculated W? W we calculated. W. Let's say we want in the distillate benzene, toluene and xylene. Let's say we want 0.999 benzene. Say xylene we want 0. Benzene, toluene and xylene. We want 0.98 here. We want 0 here. Can you calculate how much D will be there, how much W will be there? Can we calculate? Simple calculations. Let's take 100 kilomoles per hour of the feed. We might not even want this. Let's not put the xylene spec here right now. So this toluene would be 0 0.001. Or maybe if you want, maybe a little, little loose 0 0.95, 0 0.05. So can you calculate D now? So 31.5. 31.5 kilomoles per hour. And W would be? And what would be the mole fractions of toluene and xylene? So toluene zero point four one. Okay, and this would be zero point five nine. Do you people agree? Disagree? Anybody else has got any other number? Anybody has any other number? Nobody has any other number. No, sir. Now, can you find Rather, can you design a column? 
one important point that you would have probably known but anyway let us explicitly uh, discuss it three components so you can represent the compositions on a ternary diagram are you aware of the ternary diagrams either in this format or in this format are you aware of ternary diagrams if somebody say something i cannot assume your response and go on talking yes sir I in led we have done it depend on your yes sir yes you are done it so what you had probably done was this kind of triangle you had benzene toluene and xylene so this vertex means 100% pure benzene this corner or vertex or edge or or or, or point means 100% toluene and this one means 100% xylene do you agree with that do you remember that and we had all these parallel lines drawn here and lines parallel like these and lines parallel like these to each of these edges do you remember that and then we represented compositions yes sir sir yes sir yes sir so if you if you write the feed composition if you put the feed composition on this triangular diagram benzene is 0.3 that means if you take this uh, if you take this altitude of the triangle or then you go 0.3 up so this would be benzene corresponding to 0.3 would be somewhere along this line all this line corresponds to benzene equal to 0.3 and then toluene corresponding to 0.3 that means we this may be 0.1 we are drawing a line sorry I'm sorry we are drawing a line as if it is this altitude and then these lines parallel to this side this would be maybe 0.2 toluene maybe 0.3 toluene so this point of intersection let me put maybe another color this line would correspond to maybe 0.1 toluene this line maybe corresponds to 0.3 toluene and therefore this point corresponds to benzene equal to 0.3 toluene equal to 0.3 and xylene equal to 0.4 do you, do you agree with that Yes, no. Yes, sir. So, if you want to draw in terms of this kind of triangle, it is a bit easier. So, because it is in our usual x y coordinates, so maybe I will draw. This is point one benzene, point two benzene, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven. Eight point nine and ha, one of benzene, and then same with toluene. It is now easier. Point one, point two, point three. In terms of xylene, now it will be the other vertex. Point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine. So point one, point two, point three, point four, point five. Six point seven point eight point nine and one of xylene. So feed point, if I have to draw, it is benzene equal to point three. So somewhere along this line, and xylene equal to point four. That means somewhere along this line. So this would be my feed point. Do you agree with that? Either you can draw on this triangle, or you can draw on this right angle triangle, or an equilateral triangle either way do you agree with this yes sir yes sir now if you have to draw the topmost point benzene equal to 0.95 xylene equal to 0 where would that top point be distillate Be on this B T line. Yeah, that xylene equal to zero. That means it will be somewhere on this edge of the column. 
somewhere on this edge of the triangle and benzene equal to 0.95 that means here this is our distillate do you agree with that yes sir and now if you have to draw the bottom point w xylene equal to 0.59 somewhere here and toluene equal to 0.41 or and benzene equal to 0 so where would that point be here do you agree with that yes sir bottom W. What can you say about these three points D and F and W? There is some special property about these three points. So three points of a straight line. Yeah, three points lie on a straight line. Haven't you done that in your undergraduate course when you started doing extractions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember or you don't remember? Yes, sir. Now I want you to find out how many theoretical stages would be required, what would be the reflux required to do this separation. Can you can you calculate? If so, how will you calculate? There's going to be a lot of homework at least this week. Because you have not done last week's homework. So that homework has piled up. How do you think you will do this problem? How do you design a column means how do you find the number of theoretical stages required for a given reflux ratio? Let's say reflux ratio is 3. I'm just taking some value and finding out the number of theoretical stages required. How will we do this problem? Look at what we were doing in the first problem. tell me how will you extend it to this particular problem if you want we can make little life little simple if we assume something if we assume something our life will be very straightforward What assumption would you like to make? Would you like to make some assumptions to help you to simplify? No, you don't want to make some assumptions? Hello? Somebody say something? Anybody around? Nobody's around, looks like. Yes, sir. Can, oh, you are around. Okay. Would, you, would you like to make some assumptions? Adiabatic column. Adiabatic column. Uh, why is that? 
well anyway we have been assuming adiabatic column we have not been doing enthalpy balance even this particular problem we assumed we did not do enthalpy balance so it is assumed that it was adiabatic look at this problem what is it that you were doing and can you extend it to this now so when i say can you design what i mean is assume say r equal to 3 find number of theoretical plates i can take a different value of r suppose r equal to 4 or r equal to 5 or r equal to 2 we can keep on doing this because anyway we are doing excel using excel to do calculation suppose right now r is equal to 3 can you find out number of theoretical plates if you have to find out number of theoretical plates what would you need to do is problem statement clear to everybody Yes, Do, you Do you want time to think? Do you want a break? you want time to think somebody say something amol so time to think okay time yes sir think. time to think amol we want time to think yeah yeah okay actually we haven't done these kind of calculations for multi component so yeah i know i know i know undergraduate we have never done these kinds of calculations so last lecture was a revision of all the basic concepts that why it was title was given as basic concepts now title is multi component so now the syllabus starts for this semester so think take 2 3 minutes 4 minutes 5 minutes and if anybody wants to say volunteer please go ahead i'm listening any thoughts you just think loudly as if you are thinking aloud just say something whatever comes to your mind don't worry whether answer is right or wrong whatever comes to your mind nothing comes to anybody's mind
Amol, would you like to say something? No, sir, not not at thought. Maybe actually we can uh, design a column to first of all separate benzene and toluene in the rectifying section, and toluene and xylene in the stripping section separately. No, that, that is why do you want to do two two columns? Then where will toluene go? So we are only doing binary separation. We are only separating benzene from toluene and xylene. And then we will put this into another column and then take out toluene and xylene. Purified. I'm not even asking that. I'm only asking this one column. How will we find number of theoretical plates required? At red say reflux ratio equal to 3. I'm telling you the reflux ratio. I'm not asking you to find the reflux ratio. I'm saying I want reflux ratio equal to 3. Aniruddha, any thoughts? Just say something, whatever comes to your mind. Oh, so we need to draw the operating line somewhere. Okay, okay. At least something you have said. Let me put it down. We need to draw operating line. Excellent. How will we draw operating line? How did we draw operating line in the binary column? We had a binary column like this. We had x1 and x2. We had a distillate. How did we draw operating line? How did we get y is equal to r by r plus 1 x plus xd by r plus 1? This was our operating line. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Now, how did we get this? How did we get this operating line? Sir, we did material balance for the... Material top. balance for where? For the top traces. We did a material balance across this envelope. Yes, sir. You remember that? Yes, sir. So, when we did material balance across this envelope, across any nth tray, this was the top of the column. This was 1, 2, we had any tray n, we had n minus, n plus 1, we had n minus 1, right? Vapor coming up was V n plus 1, liquid going down was L n. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And we did material balance across this nth tray. So across this control volume, dotted control volume, V n plus 1 was what was coming in. What was going out was L n. And what was going out was D. That was total material balance. Do you agree with that? And then the component balance, we had Vn plus 1, Y coming from n plus 1th tray. This is what was coming in. What was going out was L from the nth tray, Xn, and D and Xd. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And then, because anyway, total material balance we have already done. So we said y n plus 1 would be L n divided by V n plus 1 x n plus D divided by V n plus 1 x D. Do you remember this? So this gave us R by R plus 1 x n plus D 
1 by r plus 1 xt. Don't you people remember this? Yeah, undergraduate me sab magab kiya tha kya? Yes. Yes kya? Remember ki magab kiya tha? Yes, sir, remember. Kis ke liye yes bol rahe ho? Magab ke liye ki remember ke liye? Sir, remember ke liye. Achha, kuch bhi fake mat. Sab magab kiya tha tum log ne. Now, how will we do this op operating line for n components? We are doing this component balance, no? Component balance for xylene, or benzene, or toluene, or xylene. So this y n plus one can be for any component. Sir, we have to find the most volatile component. Why most volatile? Material balance. This is material balance, no? Isn't this material balance for any component? Yes, sir. This y and x, it is for any component. For all components, material balance has to be valid. Or are you saying that material balance is valid only for more volatile component? Uh, no, sir. No, no. If it was binary, we could say one minus y n plus one, one minus x n and 1 minus xd that would be the material balance for the second component isn't it yes sir do you agree do you disagree agree sir so we are doing operating line is nothing but material balance operating line is just material balance or any component. So this has to be valid for not just more volatile component, it has to be valid for all components. In undergraduate course, we were only doing binary, but now if you are doing, if our distillation column has 25 components, then material balance has to be satisfied for all 25 components, isn't it? Or do you say that material balance is only valid for, for more volatile component? Other 24 components, material balance is not valid. Is that what we are? No, sir. No. So this Y can be of any component. It is coming from the n plus 1th tray. X is for any component going down from the nth tray. XD. It is the distillate composition of any component. Material balance. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Now, suppose we want to look at the bottom of the column. This is our operating line in rectification section. Now, if you are looking at the stripping section, same way our operating line suppose we just say that this is your w this is your n n minus 1 suppose what do we just say n minus 1 and n no, we are talking n plus one. We are taking topmost ray as one, right? So n plus one, n, n minus one. Now we are taking material balance across here, isn't it? So this is v going from the nth tray, and we have l coming down from the n minus one -th tray. Do you agree with that? So V yes, sir. N what goes out of this control volume plus what goes out of this control volume must be equal to L N minus 1 what comes in to the control volume. And so the N would be 
minus W and component balance what comes in L n minus 1 X n minus 1 is what comes in to the control volume what goes out of the control volume is V n Y n plus W X W Do you agree with that? So this is your operating line. But that's valid for any component, whether it is more volatile, less volatile. It is X and Y for that particular component. Don't you agree? Yes, sir. So, okay. Now. Okay, now we know how to do get operating lines. And we can write this also in terms of R and feed and all that because now we are in the stripping section. So your feed has got added. And then feed also we can write in terms of distillate and bottoms and all those things we can do. That's the any undergraduate kid can do. Okay, next. So we got operating lines. Now tell me. Anirudh, tell me. Go forward. Now what will you do? How will you find number of theoretical plates? Look what we discussed in the first part of the lecture. First one hour of the lecture. What did we discuss? Don't you think we have to just don't you think we have to just do a bubble point calculation and an operating line? Don't you think so? Bubble point yes, sir. and operating line? Don't you think so? Yes, sir. So, if we have to start, can we not do like this? If you have to design, start from bottom. So let's write benzene, toluene, and xylene at the bottom. Benzene is zero. Well, zero is going to create a problem because, okay, take it. We'll do biomaterial balance. Or we just say some small value. Just say some small value. Point triple zero one. Point triple zero one. Toluene. Point four one. And xylene. Point five nine. Yeah, I mean one of them will be point zero zero four zero zero. Point four one point four zero nine nine. If you want, then it'll add up to one. So we'll say point four zero nine nine, and this we will say point zero four nine nine. Okay, does that make you happy? Is that okay? Now, how did we do this particular case? How did we do? Don't we have to go to the equilibrium line? That means, don't we have to find a bubble point in equilibrium with this composition? Somebody say something, Baba. 
I can't, I can't imagine what you are thinking and keep on talking. Unless you tell me something, only then we can talk. Looks like I've got disconnected. Nobody's around. Oh, anyway, if I'm disconnected, why am I talking? Oh, I got disconnected. Nobody's around. Ah, let me log out. Hello, no, sir. are you people there or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're there, no? So say something, no? Somebody say something. What did we do in the first part of the lecture? Didn't we say that if you have to start from bottom and this is your equilibrium and this is your operating line, don't we have to do a bubble point calculation and then go to the material, do material balance? That's how we'll get one stage. Do you agree or do you disagree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is our this is our corresponding point from the bottom of the column. Now, don't you have to do a bubble point calculation to get to this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then we will get here. Then don't you think we have to do an come to the operating line by doing material balance that is this point. Material balance is nothing but operating line. Isn't it? So then that will come to our one stage. Isn't it? Do you agree or do you disagree? Agree, sir. Yes. And then from this Y, now we have to go to the X by material balance. So this is our stage one, one triangle completed. Do you agree or do you disagree? Unless I, I hear now 23, unless I hear now 23 agree or disagree, I'm not going to go forward. Or 22 only. One person has left. Agreed. We'll wait till we hear, till I hear 22 agree or. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so nobody is disagreeing. Now that everybody has agreed, why can't you do the calculation? You have Excel with you. you. Do the calculation and get to the first theoretical plate. Get to the point here. Sir, which model should be used, sir? Because ah, so now, told... ah, so now, now the question will come. To do the bubble point calculation, you need thermodynamic model. So that's what I've been asking you for all along. What is it that you should be doing? So for benzene, toluene, xylene, what kind of thermodynamic model would you want to use? Hey, this is not even a separation processes question. This is a thermodynamics question. For benzene, toluene, xylene, what kind of thermodynamic model would you need? Would you want to apply? What is the simplest thermodynamic model? 
सर कांस्टेंट रिलेटिव वाला रिलेटिव लिसन टू द क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द सिंपलेस्ट थर्मोडायनेमिक मॉडल राउंड फ्लो सर वाइबो हैव यू अंडरस्टूड द क्वेश्चन कांस्टेंट रिलेटिव वोलेटिलिटी relative volatility can be 25 or relative volatility can be 1 if relative volatility is 1 it is definitely not the simplest thermodynamic model constant relative volatility means you are assuming constant volatility across the whole column is it yes, sir but the constant value of relative volatility can be 1 then it's an azeotrope then nothing will happen no separation will happen do you agree do you disagree yes sir i agree so what is the simplest thermodynamic model by bo that you have come across simple thermodynamic model is no thermodynamic model is required and no thermodynamic model is required means ideal solution it means raoult's law don't you think so don't you think raoult's law is applicable here don't you think is a, it is a, it is okay to apply raoult's law for benzene toluene xylene or do you think it is not okay to apply raoult's law to benzene toluene xylene somebody say something anybody anything whatever yes. comes to your mind uh, yes sir we can actually apply because activity coefficient can be assumed to be almost one uh, since all the three have similar kind of structure with a difference of methyl group correct so similar structure no charges uh, similar uh, functional groups all are aromatic so assume raoult's law so if you assume raoult's law can you do a bubble point calculation for benzene equal to 0.0001 toluene equal to 0.4099 xylene equal to 0.59 yes or no yes sir yes sir so that means you will be able to calculate the values of y which are in equilibrium with this particular value of x that's a bubble point temperature calculation But don't you realize that we have this is what we talked about in the first part of the lecture is this not what we talked about in the first part of the lecture first one hour where we not talking about this thing only yes sir only one person seems to be thinking only one person yes sir two yes, yes sir three four yes sir yes sir five yes sir yes sir six yes. seven yes sir eight, yes sir ten yes sir Eleven. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so if you have been talking about the same thing in the first part of the lecture, all I am asking you to do is extend it to multi-component, extend it to not three components. Can you do calculations now for one theoretical plate, bubble point calculation, and then correspondingly from operating line the composition here so we are going from here to here that's a bubble point calculation 
and from here we are going to go to here by material balance bubble point material balance one theoretical plate so if you do for one then i have to just do it for second third and so on isn't it can you do now you have excel with you take antoine equation do google search for antoine constants for benzene antoine constants for toluene antoine constants for xylene can you do calculations yes sir then what i want you to do is plot these compositions on this ternary diagram this was our w this was our w i want you to plot the compositions corresponding to this first theoretical plate and then the second theoretical plate and the third theoretical plate i want you to plot the liquid compositions i want you to plot them on this graph and see how do they look like can you do hello anybody has doubts in doing these yes. calculations only one person seems to think that they can, he can do the calculations sir uh, just one doubt yes uh, so just just explain sir uh, where are we using antonic equation and to find the temperature or for, to find the uh, pressure because uh, are we uh, taking uh, one atmospheric as a pressure yes okay our distillation column is going to operate under constant pressure isn't it we talked about it last time yes yes we are doing a bubble point calculation we are finding y in equilibrium with the x bubble point calculation knowing pressure and knowing x we are calculating y and t it's a bubble point temperature calculation knowing oops forget this knowing p one atmosphere x that is xw we are calculating t and y is it not what we did here yes yes corresponding to x we made a guess we calculated p1 sat p2 sat a gamma 1 gamma 2 we had a bubble point x1 gamma 1 p1 sat plus x2 gamma 2 p2 sat that must be equal to total pressure do you remember or you don't remember siddhan remember sir ha ah. So now is your doubt cleared or not cleared? Yes, sir, cleared. Oh, okay. So only one person seems to think that he can do. Any other person thinks that he can do, he or she can do. Let me take names now. Actually, Aditya, can you do? Will you be able to do? Aditya is absent. Means he is locked in, but gone off to sleep. 
because it is boring to attend lectures after lunch. Amardeep, will you be able to do? Uh, sir, how will we plot that ternary diagram in Excel sheet? Arey Baba, forget that plotting. Can you do the calculations? That's what I'm asking first. Uh, yes, sir, I will try it. Uh, Amol, can you do? Yes, sir, we'll try. Aniruddha. Yes, sir. Arshit. Yes, sir. Imanshu. I'm not taking. I'm not taking your attendance. Yes, sir. I'm asking whether you will be able to do or not. Don't say yes simply like that. Imanshu. You will be able to do right. Yes, sir. It is not. I'm asking attendance. Say you will say yes, 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 yes. Present, 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 present. Muhammad. Yes, sir. Amrita. Yes, sir. Nitin, will you be able to do? Yes, sir. Ayodhi, will you be able to do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Raj Rajwal, Purvi, Raghav, Rahul, Raviraj. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sharon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, ah. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Now, how do you? So the question is, how do we plot these compositions on a triangular diagram? Okay, let's open Excel. What are okay? What, what, okay, let's let, let, let's go back. Let's go back. What are we plotting? What are we plotting? In a triangular diagram, what are we plotting? Suppose this is our x-axis. If we are drawing a graph. This is our x-axis. What is x-axis? What is on x-axis? And what is on y-axis? This is a y-axis. What is on x-axis? Bottom plot. composition. Composition of what? It's the bottom. Bottom, nahi re baba. What is on x-axis? Point one, point two, point three, right point four, point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, point nine of what? Xylene. 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 Correct. On y-axis, it is point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six of what? Benzene. 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 Right. So, so, so if I have my benzene. Composition mole fraction of benzene, and I have mole fraction of xylene. So let's say zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, zero point seven, zero point nine. Let's say xylene is point five, point six, point seven, eight five, eight. Eight nine, eight nine five. Let, let's just put some value. Correspondingly, sir, screen is not visible. Oh, I am sharing already. No, sir, it is not visible. Oh, let's try again. Now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if I take different compositions, x b versus x x, if I plot this on a graph, these are points on my triangular diagram, right? Obviously, yeah. Oh well, obviously. Sorry. Obviously, this point uh, seven and point eight five is not possible because add addition goes beyond one. To point two and maybe let's say point zero four. Right. Let's make this as point six five also. If you plot these points, are they not points on your triangular diagram? Is it not a triangular diagram? Hello. Yes, sir. 
who was asking somebody was asking right somebody was asking something somebody was asking how to plot how to plot who was asking yes sir i was asking ah okay now can you not plot this is is this not your ternary diagram oh, just, yes sir just you have this this line diagonal diagonal so this is your benzene this is your toluene this is your xylene so these are different points that have these compositions now you want the compositions not some random values but now you want compositions of the bottom tray first tray second tray third tray fourth tray will you be able to plot yes sir do you agree do you disagree agree okay so do calculations and plot do the calculations and plot Do you want to plot now, or do you think you can plot at plot as homework? so once you get the first tray then you go to the second tray again a bubble point calculation again a material balance calculation then go to second go to third can you do this as homework yes sir we can try Yes sir. Yes sir. Only 3 people in the class talk or 4 people in the class talk. Would we Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Only seven people agree that they can do it as homework. All others are sleeping. Yes, sir. Yes. Perhaps we should have lecture at thirty in the morning. Then people will be awake. Yes, sir. So that how is Bhuneshwar? Yes, sir. Cases are increasing, sir. Right now, I am I am in containment zone. Like one oh, of the flat is so in, zone in the apartment. I'm residing. You are positive. No, or no, no. no. I am not positive, sir. But uh, I am only in the oh, containment zone, be... sir. It is better to be in <laughs> negative sir, and one in of the zone than being flat in containment zone. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. It's quite safe. <laughs> yes. So you get food provided to you. Is it? Or you are starving no, for sir, no. days. Okay, you are not starving for days. No, sir. Things are not that much strict here right now because it is a mini containment zone. Ah, so Binda can go. Where do you go? Yes, sir. Almost. Okay. Yes, sir. 
okay okay now now next thing i want you to do next thing i want you to do is not assume ideal gas law uh, sorry ideal gas law we are saying not assume ideal solution let's say we want to do this problem again say for methanol ethanol propanol or let's take some weird components um, let's say we want uh, um, water acetone and let's let's take some something else no um, uh, let's not take water water we take then all the problems we have uh, let, okay let's say what data we have I have in Google Classroom. I have shared two uh, uh, two files with you related to NRTL parameters. One of the file. Let me just open. Let me just open that file. One of the files. Share this also. No? I have shared two files with you in Google Classroom. Uh, I have to share a window. Yeah, are you able to see? This I have shared through Google Classroom. And this is one of the files. NRTL parameters and Antoin coefficients. So it gives you an NRTL model in terms of any IJ. So you can extend it to ternary and you have all these components. So you have these binary interaction parameter AIJ, BIJ, CIJ and your Antoin constants. So this file I have shared with you. This is one of the files. Uh, so let's say uh, we have uh, and then other file also I have. Let's take any three, uh, methanol, ethanol, and let's not take benzene. Um, let's say we have, uh, okay, we have um, water and methanol and something or I have another file that is shared with you that is this one I think this one is better so you might be able to ah, okay let's take this file and let's take this these three components let's say methanol ethanol and one propanol and I want you to use the NRTL model So if I have the same, uh, same, uh, same problem now, so let's say I have methanol, methanol, ethanol, and propanol. Let's say mole fraction 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. And let's say at the top of the distillation column, methanol ethanol and propanol let's say I want so this is let's say 100 kilomoles per hour take the same values how does it matter what was the condition 0 0.95 0 0.0499 0 0.95 0 0.0499 0 0 0 0.0001 and at the bottom of the column methanol, ethanol and propanol this we want 0 0.0001 ethanol 
0.59 now can we use an RTL model and do the same plate by plate calculations keep let's say R is equal to 5 reflux ratio is 5 let's say just some value I don't I don't care what the value is just now can we do plate by plate calculations starting from bottom and going to top and plot on ternary diagram Will you be able to do this as homework? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two people have said yes. yes. Three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do. Yes, sir. Seven. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Great. So you have enough homework. We have one homework which is your uh, cyclohexylamine and aniline. Second homework benzene toluene xylene ideal mixture Proud's law ethanol ethanol propanol nrtl model i wanted to do this just now at least one of them just now at least benzene toluene xylene can you do just now because it's raoult's law so it is easy can you try benzene toluene xylene just now Yes, sir. Take out your Excel. So, benzene, toluene, xylene, your vapor pressures are in your other file. But in any case, you can just do Google and get the Antoine constants for benzene, toluene, xylene. do in excel if you want to have a break of five minutes you can have a break of five minutes shall we have a break of five minutes so that everybody comes back refreshed no answer means yes that we want a break no answer means i can interpret it any way i want So I'll ask another question. Shall we have a quiz? No answer means I will interpret it any way I want. Isn't that dangerous? No 
nobody is nobody is around looks like so nobody is listening in your cre course everybody has got a grade so everybody has got 10 points still nobody is answering i am going to share end semester separation processes advanced separation processes paper with you if you send me your secret gmail id hello is anybody around nobody is responding yes sir yes ah. sir yes sir yes sir thought you will respond so you want a break or you don't want a break yes sir yes sir we are so 5 minutes yes, break yes, and then get let us be refreshed and let us do these calculations at least for benzene toluene xylene just now so 5 minutes break
All right. Can we start? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me do with you one of the calculations. Okay. Let us do in Excel one of the calculations. Let me delete this. So, I have benzene, I have toluene, I have xylene. We are starting from the bottom of the column 0 0.0001, 0 0.4099. Xylene would be, xylene would be 1 minus benzene minus toluene. Okay. Now we want to do a bubble point pressure calculations, a bubble point temperature calculation. So pressure is one atmosphere. So we are going to guess temperature. We are going to calculate E benzene vapor pressure. Set for toluene, set for benzene, P set for toluene, and P set for xylene. So take Antoine's constants for benzene, toluene, and xylene. They are there in the other one of the Excel, one of the sheets, one of the PDFs that I have shared with you. We are going to use Raoult's law. We are going to use Raoult's law. So, the total. Yes, temperature. Suppose I want to, we are going to be at the bottom of the column. So, toluene and xylene, it is between toluene and xylene. So, let's say something like 120, 130 degrees centigrade. And then we are going to do goal seek. For this P total, we are going to say, what if analysis goal seek this to a value 760 mm Hg? by changing this particular temperature. Are you with me? Are you doing? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So once you do, tell me the values. I got temperature 397 Kelvin. Okay, consider. Now let me write temperature. I'm just saying Kelvin. Okay. 397. Okay. Benzene vapor pressure. P set. Uh, 3.37 uh, bar. Okay, so it is in bar. 3.37. One point four nine bar. One point four nine. Eileen? Point six seven eight bar. Point six seven eight. So 
so total pressure we are going to say raoult's law so benzene multiplied by benzene toluene mole fraction toluene vapor p set plus xylene mole fraction into xylene p set right so they added up to 1.01 bar so that is fine one atmosphere perfect so now we can calculate why benzene why toluene and why xylene so why benzene would be mole fraction of benzene multiplied by vapor pressure divided by total pressure mole fraction of toluene would be in the vapor y toluene would be mole fraction x toluene into z toluene divided by total pressure and xylene mole fraction of xylene in the liquid multiplied by p z xylene divided by total pressure right. do you get these values sharan yes sir same right now with these three we have to go to the again operating line how will we go to the operating line what is the equation of the operating line everybody gets up to here up to this everybody is getting not getting anybody stuck up to this point anybody doing up to this point yes sir yes sir yes no yes sir okay now yes, sir. let's go back to our our calculation where here we are doing operating line okay what is our operating line now so we have got from let's just zoom in let me draw this was our operating line we have gone from here up to the equilibrium so this was our bubble point calculation now from here we need to go to the operating line this is our material balance we are going from remember what are we doing remember what are we doing we had vapor one second we had vapor coming we had vapor going we had vapor going we have vapor going we have liquid coming down 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 so we had this y and x this was the bottom most yw and xw this was our bottom most tray now suppose we have calculated this y now which is in equilibrium with this x now we are going to calculate this x by material balance remember these are related by material balance this y and this x are related by material balance what is the material balance this is the material balance with that particular value of y with this particular value of y which is from here we are going to calculate the value of x this value of y is here this value of x is what we are going to calculate so x n minus 1 would be v n y n plus w x w divided by l n minus 1 do you agree with that
this is your material balance do you agree do you disagree yes sir material balance or operating line whichever way you want to call this y is what we have now xw is already known xw is known the y we have calculated w we already know we have calculated w remember w we have calculated 68.5 Do you people remember? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Disagree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. How how will we get how will we get this V N and L N minus one? How will we get them? We are assuming constant molar molar overflow. That means latent heats. of benzene and latent heat of toluene and latent heat of xylene are identical molar molar basis and therefore the vapor flow rates do not change the liquid flow rates do not change and we are saying that the liquid is saturated liquid the feed is saturated liquid you remember that so this liquid going back to the column is r multiplied by d do you agree with that hello yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir so this liquid going down up to the feed plate is r multiplied by d beyond the feed plate or below the feed plate it is r into d plus the feed and then what vapor goes up would be r plus d plus f minus w that goes out so vapor would be r plus d plus f minus w that has gone out do you remember that we are assuming late vapor flow rates are the same liquid flow rates are the same in any section across the feed plate it will change because feed is saturated liquid Do you agree? Do you disagree? Nobody agrees. Agrees, sir. Yes, sir. Only yes, sir. Agree. Yes, so sir. I'm saying if you take any reflux ratio, let's say what reflux ratio we have taken is how much? Three, four, five. How much did we take? How much did I? How much did we take? Three. Three. We wanted to take. Yeah. Okay. Let's assume reflux ratio is three. So calculate the D, calculate the L, calculate the V. This is in the rectification section. Uh, sorry, we are sorry, sorry, sir. We are going from bottom to top. So these L and V are in the stripping section. So calculate what is L in the stripping section. Liquid going down. Calculate what is V. in the stripping section going up and in the stripping section we are assuming latent heats are the same therefore l does not change in the stripping section l v does not change in the stripping section but l for the rectification section is different v in the rectification is section is different because there is a feed that is getting added which is saturated liquid do you people agree do you people disagree yes sir yes sir yes sir rahul do you agree will you be able to calculate v and l in the stripping section yes sir i calculated the, that well you have already calculated excellent So what is L and V in the stripping section? Uh, L is equal to one ninety four point five and V is equal to one twenty six because wait, uh, as wait, 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 let me write one ninety point one ninety four point five one ninety four point five what kilomoles? Yes, sir. Per hour, right? And V is equal to uh, one twenty six 
as feed is saturated so v is equal to like uh, v dash is equal to v okay ये v dash भी क्या है वो मुझे कुछ याद नहीं है dash भी वेपर अपलो वेपर डाउन फ्लो अच्छा मगब किया है तुमने dash मतलब stripping section dash non dash मतलब rectification ऐसा कुछ तो है ना तुम्हारा क्या यस सर यस सर सब मगब किया है एक बार सेकंड आई नीड टू टेक दिस कॉल Sorry, there was a sorry. There was a call from our dean. Chai, dean wanted something urgently. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so anybody else gets this same L, same V, some different L, different V? Yeah, either you have to agree yes, sir, that this L and V are correct, or you have to disagree that this L and V are wrong. One more person gets the same. Arshit, you are getting same, is it? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Anybody else getting the same L, same V? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same. Okay. Fine. So now with this L and V, now we apply this equation. We can apply it for any component because our material balance is for any component and for all components material balance has to be satisfied so we can apply it to benzene we can apply it to toluene we can apply it to xylene so if i take this y to be of benzene i will get this x to be of benzene if i take y of toluene i will get x of toluene and we will get to this point so if you want you can add one more column l and v in the stripping section add two more columns to the excel sheet let me share the excel sheet once again okay now is the excel sheet visible hello is it visible or not visible yes sir yes, sir. visible last time there was some problem so this l we can calculate l we have calculated v we have calculated now calculate the this is our liquid and this is our vapor we have done the equilibrium calculation bubble point now calculate the x values these three values going from these three values of y calculate these three values of x by our operating line material balance so tell me somebody calculate and tell me what are the values of the benzene toluene xylene mole fractions
take so long. Excel me formula dalne ke liye itna time lagta hai. हेलो हेलो एनीबडी वैल्यूज ऑफ बेंजीन टॉलिन हाइली मोल फ्रैक्शन इन द लिक्विड चरण एनोस आई एम डूइंग इट सर आई एम गेटिंग हाइलीन एस पॉइंट फोर फोर वन थ्री या जस्ट टेल मी ऑल द वैल्यूज ओके बेंजीन बिकॉज़ वी नीड ऑल द थ्री वैल्यूज नो बेंजीन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू सिक्स टोल्यून टोल्यून पॉइंट फाइव फाइव सिक्स फाइव सिक्स जीरो आह फाइव फाइव सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव फाइव सिक्स थ्री सॉरी एंड जाइलिन वुड ऑब्वियसली बी वन माइनस दिस माइनस दैट यस Now you do another bubble point calculation and another material balance and another bubble point calculation and another material balance and so on. Anybody gets these values, same values as Shubham, or somebody gets any other values different from Shubham? Same way, sir. Same. Okay.
same values. Other Shubham. Sharon, you did bubble point calculation very fast. Uh, yes, sir. I'm getting the values, but uh, it, the XP X values are not summing up to one. I guess there's some mistake in my calculation. No, no, don't don't sum up to one. You just say xylene mole fraction is one minus benzene mole fraction and one minus toluene mole minus toluene mole fraction. Yes, sir. I got uh, XP same. I got XP same, uh, mm -hmm. but XT is 0.14. And no, something wrong in your XT calculation because we are going upwards, right? We are going upwards yes, from the bottom of the column, so it will get enriched into the volatile yes, components. Yes, sir. Now you do the next one. Now you do one more bubble point calculation and then operating line. And then one more bubble point calculation and operating line and one more bubble point. L and V are going to remain the same. as long as we are in the stripping section. Have you understood what is to be done? saying anything that means nobody has understood yes anything. sir yes sir yes yes sir okay so i will give you another five ten minutes to do these calculations anyway once you get one row once you get a second row completely filled then it is just copy paste copy paste copy paste till you go to the feed point that's the advantage of doing it in excel because you can just copy the formula And then I want you to plot on an X, Y, on a, on a ternary diagram. You have to just plot B and X, column B on Y axis, column X on the X axis, benzene mole fractions on Y axis and xylene mole fractions on the X axis. So another five, 10 minutes you please complete all these calculations. If you have doubts, we can discuss.
anybody has done you can just tell me the the values of benzene and toluene and xylene liquid phase Anybody doing, not doing? People are doing. Is it? And so I got next temperature as 393. Achha, but your problem is solved or not solved? I, uh, I got uh, the X, X as 0 0.0025, 0 0.536, and 0 0.46. Okay, okay, slightly different. Okay, just uh, off, off, I guess. Some your vapor pressures must be slightly different in there. Okay, so you got all the values now? All um, these x values, all value? Uh, no, sir. I just calculated for the next first, one. Like, yeah. For that, I got temperature 393. 393. Okay. Good. Temperature is reducing as you go to the top of the column. Correct? As it should. Yes, sir. 392. Okay, now that you got one set of formulae, you just have to copy paste, copy paste the formula. It should take about 28 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 calculations. So it should take less than 30 seconds. Your Typing every formula again, or you're simply copy pasting the formula. Excel, are we using as a typewriter, or are we using Excel as a calculator? Hello, Excel, using sir. as a calculator, right? So you just, no, just copy Excel. and paste the formula. Only goal seek doesn't get pasted, so you have to do goal seek. Once you have the x, once you have the liquid phase compositions on different trays, plot them in your ternary diagram.
okay uh, let's go forward i think once you get the hang of it if anybody has any doubts if no if nobody has doubts it's just a matter of doing the calculations in excel so you should be able to do it very easily if anybody has doubts please speak up nobody has doubts so can we assume can i assume that everybody has understood these calculations hello no doubts so can we assume that everybody has understood the calculations then if you understood these calculations now only thing that you need to do is repeat the same thing for methanol ethanol and propanol only thing that will change is in addition to this you will have activity coefficients to be calculated so you have calculated the you have calculated the vapor pressures here so now it will be methanol ethanol and propanol so you will have to calculate vapor pressure of methanol vapor pressure of ethanol and vapor pressure of propanol there will be different obviously from nrtl now you will have to calculate gamma for methanol gamma for ethanol and gamma for propanol and correspondingly your formula for the bubble point pressure bubble point temperature now will have mole fraction vapor pressure psat and activity coefficient x gamma and psat plus x gamma and psat plus x gamma and p set do you agree yes no yes sir add them up so you will have total pressure do goal seek for total pressure equal to 1 bar 1 atmosphere or 1.013 bar so 1 atmosphere by changing this temperature and then everything else remains the same only change is here activity coefficients now they will be calculated from nrtl model is that okay does everybody feel comfortable doing anybody would have any difficulties speak up now so that you don't get stuck somewhere in the middle of the week i am assuming that you are doing host going to do homework Does somebody say something? Does anybody have doubts, or people feel comfortable doing? 
will you be able to do for methanol ethanol propanol nobody is saying anything yes sir what do yes sir yes sir yes sir so yes sir shall we stop for the day shall we stop for the day will you be able to calculate and tell me how many stages are required for benzene toluene xylene separation how many stages are required for methanol ethanol propanol separation yes sir by when will you yes, tell sir. me and by the way you have to complete the previous problem also of cyclohexylamine and water uh, sorry cyclohexylamine and aniline not water what am i saying you have to complete this this problem also so here is what we are going to do next time next time onwards we are going to look at how to utilize all this for well next time what we are going to do is um, look at azeotropes and how do we separate azeotropes so that is our next next class azeotropes different types of azeotropes and how do we separate that's going to be for the next 3 4 classes that's what we are going to do separating as you tropes okay shall we stop for the day but to do this you require these kinds of calculations you require multi component calculations to do this separation calculations you require multi component calculations and therefore we did these problems today not because we had nothing better to do so please complete the homework so that you are in better shape you are better prepared to do understand what is going to come in the next couple of lectures or two or three lectures